1936, events unfolded in Europe that would shape the 20th century. Civil war broke out in Spain, the Nazis retook the Rhineland, and in that same year, a quiet young mathematician completed a new theory in his rooms at Cambridge University. While the world changed around him with little fanfare, Alan Turing, just 24 years old, dreamt up a machine that could be taught to think. Turing's invention was originally described in his academic paper as an imaginary machine to crunch imaginary equations. The machine read symbols printed on a tape. The order of the symbols was in fact a programme. The machine understood this programme by referring to an internal table setting out what the function of each symbol was. No tea breaks, no pens running out, no human errors. Slowly but surely, the machine could do incredibly complicated calculations with an infinitely long tape to work on and endless time to do them in. It then produced the result as a new set of symbols. Alan Turing's search for a thinking machine began when he realised that those symbols in his machine didn't necessarily have to mean numbers. They could, in fact, mean anything at all. Problem solving, ideas, emotions even. Anything that could be converted and written down in symbols could be carried out. And not by different machines. All of them could be achieved within this same machine. A universal machine. An electronic brain. A computer. World War II arrived and Turing was recruited to help build machines to crack German codes. These were complex creations with Turing's mathematical and engineering intelligence in their DNA. But they still had just one specific task. Once that was achieved, the war decoders were obsolete. After the war, as Turing and others began to physically try and build the kind of computer that he'd imagined, he became a pioneer of what we now know as artificial intelligence. He was convinced these computers would be able to take on tasks we couldn't achieve ourselves and make life better. Turing described them as children. But Turing wasn't thinking of the humanoid robots of science fiction that people feared would take over the world. Computers to him were like humans because they too, as with children, could learn from us, their instructors. Could you say a machine has intelligence? Yes, said Turing. A child, when given knowledge by a teacher, isn't told that knowledge doesn't belong to them. Against a lot of confusion and paranoia, Turing tried to make people realise that it was up to us to become better teachers, and so set this new technology free. Replicating the brain, creating self-learning emotion and intelligence, is still proving an immense challenge for us but we're slowly understanding more and more. Now our computers do far more than sing songs and play chess. Intelligent machines can drive our cars unaided, guide life-saving surgery, keep us in touch, informed, and predict the future. These are the descendants of Turing's universal machine. A robot recently learned how to recognize different shaped rocks. It began life with a young man hunched over a desk in Cambridge.